Good morning, Super Readers! Thank you for joining us in our Valley PBS classroom. I'm Mrs. Nix. I'm Mrs. Hammock. And I'm Mrs. Bang. This is a place for us to learn, practice, and grow, grow our brains to become even stronger readers, writers, and thinkers. So let's get started by warming up our brains with some ear training called Daily Phonemic Awareness. All right, so super readers, I'm going to challenge you today, and I've got two different things we're going to practice. The first one is going to be segmentation. So that's pretty easy. Yeah, I think you I guys think are really getting it. They are getting good at that. I'm going to give you a word, and we're just going to stretch it out and count our sounds. And then we're going to do a little substitution. All right. And I see that Mrs. Bang has found our awesome little board that we're going to use for our substitution. Okay, let's start with segmentation though. Let's stretch those words out like on a big okay. rubber band. You're going to stretch it. How many sounds can you hear? How about the word wrist? Wrist. wrist. Okay, okay, so let's stretch it out. R-I-S-T. Ooh, how many sounds did we hear? Wow. Ooh, that, that was four. Four. Is t mm -hmm. Yep, four. Good job. How about the word mouse? Hmm. Mouse. How many sounds? Let's see. Mouse. Mouse. How many did you hear? Mouse. Three? Three. Great job. And how about this one? No. Mm. Mm. Oh. 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 <laughs> Just two, 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 right? Mm, oh, good. All right, let's do a little substitution here. So, we've got our handy dandy little cards. Help me do a little segmentation with our words. And we've got, how about the word na? No. Na. How okay. many sounds do we hear? Mm, mm, ah. Two? Two. Two. Okay. What if I change ah to ooh? What's my new word? New. Ooh. New. New. Excellent job. Great. All right. Let's do one more. Here we go. We've got blue. Blue. Okay. Blue. Blue. Okay. That's three sounds. Three sounds. Mm -hmm. And I want to change oo to o. Blow. 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 Great job. All right, super readers, that is fantastic. And that is a great skill to be practicing using those excellent listening skills that you have. Mm -hmm. okay. They're getting good at that. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm thinking it's time for a little dance. I believe it is. She's got the flowers. I've excellent. got excellent roses for oh, us. Thank you. Because it's Friday. Awesome. Oh, so today's is. song is called A Rose. And if you don't have a rose, that's OK. You can just pretend that you have a rose. All right. All right. Good space. I'm mm -hmm. spaced out here. All right. Mm, they sure do Ooh, smell They're nice great. and fresh, aren't they? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It when they hurt me though they're so beautiful <laughs> they are very pretty and then yes that was thorns. very good though because i noticed that these don't actually have the any thorns yeah right. they've thorns, all been cut off yes. it's fairly nice it yeah. is nice all right all right Great. speaking of nice our super readers are doing a very nice job practicing they're ghost letter spelling patterns and reading words so mm. we're gonna practice one more day today 
and I'll see you guys later. Okay. okay. We'll see you. All right, are you ready? Okay, here we are. We have our nest card, and that's the K-N and G-N. Those are our ghost letters. And our rose card with the W-R spelling patterns. So we're going to take a look at some words and blend them together. And then we're going to build some together. So let's call our friends to come help us. Hey, you guys, are you ready to help us read? Oh, yes, let's do it. It's Friday. I'm Welcome. ready. Excellent, excellent. OK, so one last time, let's review the spelling patterns for our special patterns, our ghost letter patterns. Remember, that's a silent letter. And we don't say it. We pretend we don't see it, just like a ghost is invisible. All right? So we have K-N says N. K-N says N. Good job. G-N says N. G-N says N. Excellent. W-R says R. W-R says N. Very nice. All right, so I have three words for us to blend, and then I'm going to show you something else. Here we go. Let's take a look at this first word. All right, I'm going to put the ghost where it belongs, and let's read it. Ready? Knee. 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 Good job. We've read that a lot of times this week mm -hmm. because we're really getting used to that practice, and I can tell you guys are reading it much faster. Let's try this one. Here's our ghost letter. Ready? Na. 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 Very good. Na to na is like chewing on something. <laughs> I love to na on ice. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. All right, let's try this one. Are you ready? Here's our ghost letter. It's the W. We're going to pretend like we don't see it, and we're going to read the rest of the word. Here we go. Right. 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 Nicely done. Now, to practice, uh, we used letters that made the outline of the ghost letter so that it, it was white so that we couldn't see it. And we practiced that way. But here is what it would look like when you're reading just in a book. And so it's important for us to remember that we're going to have to identify that pattern because it's not going to have the clues that I've been using to help us. And so let's take a look. I'm going to mix them up. And let's see if you can try them out with me. Are you ready? OK. All right, here we go. Let's read this word together. What do you say? No. No. Good. Nah. Now, which letter is my ghost letter? The G. Yep, you got it. All right, let's read this one. Ready? Right. 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 Where's right. my ghost letter? It's the W. That's right. There's the W. And let's read this one. Knee. knee. Where's my ghost letter? It's the K, because we don't say knee. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, Tina. That would remember? be so good. All right. What if I want to write the word or build the word not? Like, there was a knot in my shoelace. Mm. Well... It's either going to be the K N or the G N That's because true. they both say N. Mm. You're right. And I feel like I've seen that word before, and I think it's with the K N. What do you think, Ricky? Are you are you in agreement? I agree with her. All right, let's use it. I was thinking I've seen that word too in books, and it is spelled with the. K N. But Good. I know it's a N sound. That's right, because we have that ghost spelling pattern. All right, so here we have N, and, and now we need the ot part. O T. Very ot. good. N A T. Not. Mm -hmm. Terrific. What if I want it to say new? Like, I knew you could do it. Mm. New. Uh, I've seen that word too, Mrs. Hammond. What do you think it might be? So I think it's going to be spelled with a K-N, mm -hmm. but it has the OO sound, the OO sound, right. like the spoon card. Oh, I remember good. there's lots of different spellings. There were a lot of different spellings. But, but I think it's the E-W that says OO. 
Ricky, you are getting smarter every day. You are right. Very good. So I, here I saw is it behind you, Mrs. Oh, Hammett. <laughs> yeah, the car. It was oh, right there, the spoon car in the sauce you. batting. Um, so good. Bird That's acid. right. That's using our tools, isn't it? When we have our sound spelling cards up, we can use them as a tool to help us. All right. How about new? Like your friend, the new. How would I spell Ooh, that? Like a wildebeest. Yes. That's a little tiny word. It is a tiny word. And it just had three letters. Mm -hmm. And it was with the G and the N. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then it just had a U. You're right. I think I'm going to forever remember that one, Mrs. Hammett. It's a funny looking word, isn't it? It is. It's so silly. Yeah, sometimes it's easy to remember words when they definitely look unusual. Mm -hmm. So we have new and new. That is amazing. Oh, they sound the same. They do sound the same. They are not spelled the same, and mm -hmm. they don't mean the same thing for sure, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you are getting so good at this. Well, I appreciate all the help you've given us this week, and I'll see you guys later. We're going to read a sentence. All right. Okay. okay. Bye -bye. See you later. All right, super readers, are you ready to read one last sentence on our word work board? Let's do it. I knew you would know the answer. And that's true. I did know you would know the answer. All right, let's see if you know some of the high frequency words that Mrs. Nix is gonna talk to us about today. We'll see you back here later. Awesome, thank you Mrs. Hammock. And yes, super readers, we've been doing our high frequency words all week. Do you remember why we're practicing them every day? That's right, because we see them in our reading and we need to be able to spell them so we can use them in our writing. Now, let's review our six words from this week. Here we go, you read them big and loud too. Question, children, fin, their, year, and month. We're gonna work on month today, so I want us to be able to spell it. Here we go, M-O-N, T H month. Great job. Now let's look and see what this looks like in a sentence. June is the name of a month. Excellent job. Now I have some cards that are up here and we're going to just play a little game. This is something you can actually play with a friend or you can play by yourself. It doesn't really matter. And I think I'm going to invite a friend up here to play with us today. So, Mrs. Vang, come on down. You're going to be our little friend. So this is just a memory game. And um, I just have three words to practice today because... I just want us to be able to get through a couple of them. But all we're doing is we're going to choose where we want to find a card. So month, and then I'm going to leave it like this, and then I'm going to turn over another card and see if they match. And the word is children, and so they don't match. So now, Mrs. Vane, you get a chance to see if you can find them. Okay, I love this game. Okay, so let's see. I think I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to turn... <gasps> Oh. Ooh, month, I remember where it was. I think it was right here, month. Mm -hmm. Does that okay. mean I get to take it? Sure, you can have them. All right, and then hmm, I'm going to go here and here. <gasps> Question. So I'm going to take it. Mrs. So Nix. I would say that at this point, Mrs. Fang would have won. But that's a great way to practice your high frequency words. And you can do that, again, even just by yourself and kind of play. All right, we've got a story for you, and then Mrs. Fang's gonna be back and help you with a little bit of comprehension. So we'll see you in a second. Heat Wave by Donna Loughran, illustrated by Laura Ferraro Close. Chapter one, at the pool. I'm hot, says Ty. He takes a sip of cold lemonade. I'm hotter, says Jamal. He gnaws on a frozen fruit pop. I'm the hottest, says Jamal's little brother, Martin. I'm as hot as a hot dog on a grill. The two older boys laugh. The boys are at the pool with their families. 
like many other people are there, they are trying to cool off too. All the seats in the shade are taken. The swimming pool is full of children and their parents. This month has been so dry, says Ty. My mom says the weather has been hotter this year than ever before. I hope it rains soon, says Jamal. Our yard is yellow, not green. I have a question, says Martin. May I go swim now? We have to put some more sunscreen first, says Jamal. Jamal gathers their towels. The boys walk over to their parents. Martin's dad puts sunscreen on him. Jamal and Ty put their own sunscreen on. Then the three boys jump into the pool. Chapter 2. Think Cool. Let's think of the coolest things we can, Ty says. Like what? Jamal asks. Ty answers. Let's pretend we are floating in a pool full of ice cubes. That would be great, Jamal says. What if we could go sledding on ice cream, Jamal says. Ty laughs. He asks, what flavor? I'd like strawberry, Jamal says. Me too, says Martin as he splashes by. I know, we could visit another country, says Ty. Which country would be good, asks Jamal. Some place really cold, Martin says. What about Iceland, says Ty. Iceland sounds like it would be very cold, Jamal answers laughing. Maybe we could visit the North Pole, says Martin. Ty smiles and says, that is a very cool, cool idea, Martin. Chapter 3, Beat the Heat. What else could we pretend to do to stay cool, Jamal asks. We could pretend to swim in a pool of cold rice pudding, Ty asks, says. Martin grins as he splashes by again. He says, that would feel funny. Jamal says, we could slide down a wall of ice into a cold drink. What kind of drink, Ty asks. Ty's mother calls, water, you need to drink lots of water in this heat. The boys look at each other. Race you to the water fountain, says Jamal. Man, I was hot just reading that story, were you? Oh, that was hot. I hope you guys enjoy reading and listening to the story um, called Heat Wave. Now, today for comprehension, I thought it would be a great time to practice our answering questions, but I'm going to give you some choices, just like how you would on a test. When you take a test or read a comprehension test, you usually read the question and there are multiple choice. Um, choices for you to pick from. So I thought we should practice that today and think about what our brain is thinking about when we're picking our answers. Okay, so I want you guys to help me. So the first question um, says, what caused the children to be at the pool? Do you remember that fact or that detail from the story? Well, let's read our choices. A, birthday party. Was it B, it was hot? Or three, oh, that should be C, not three. C, it is raining. So let's think about it. I know, there are some answers for sure, I know, would not make sense, right? This is what I call, we slash and trash, right? It doesn't make sense. But if I read the story, and if you were reading the story, I know you guys are telling me the answer. What caused the children to be at the party? That's right, it was hot, not because there was a birthday party. That does make sense, but if you read the story, we did not talk about a birthday party at all, right? I just put that into trick, you guys. I hope you guys didn't get tricked. Okay, let's keep going. Number two says, what do the boys do to stay safe in the sun? Ooh, do you guys remember that part in the story? What were they doing? Let's look at our choices. A says they put on more sunscreen. B says they swim in the pool. Or C says they eat ice cream. Oh, they could, all of these answers could be right, right? But only one is because it was in the story. What do the boys do to stay safe in the sun? That's right, they put on more sunscreen. Now, can you really eat ice cream? Would that keep you safe? No, you're right, that doesn't make any sense. Or they swim in the pool. Well, that will keep them cool, but not gonna keep them safe. You're right. 
Okay, last one. It says, how do you think the weather is affecting the boys? Now, remember in the story, so I put the page here for us. Now, notice there isn't any choices for us. You were supposed to write the answer down, but I quickly went and wrote the answer for us because as we were reading, I was thinking about how the weather, and it was, remember, it was really hot and how it was affecting them, and so in or on these two pages, it talked about how it was really hot, so I put, it is making them very hot, and then they are thinking of ways to stay cool. Remember all the ways that they thought of to stay cool? They thought of really cold places. They thought of visiting different country, like the country Iceland, right? Those are different ways that they thought of that could keep them cool. Now, thinking of that, I want you guys to keep that in your head because then now we're gonna use some of that and go into our writing. So let's see what our writing prompt today is. So today, our writing prompt says, how does the heat wave affect the friends in the story? So remember, we talked a lot about the boys and how it was hot, so what was my answer? The friends in the story are affected by the heat wave. They are hot. Wasn't that why, or, or what they, uh, how it affected them, they were hot. So I added another sentence to help us, to try and cool off the friends try many things, right? So because the heat wave affected them, what were some of the things that they did to keep them from not being so hot, okay? So I want you guys to think about some of the details that we can add to a paragraph. And I think I'm gonna have some of my friends to come and help us finish or continue with our writing. Are you ready? You wanna call them? Okay, let's say, friends, it's writing time. <laughs> Here they are. Hello. Now, will you guys listen to the story? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. oh, did you guys think of all the different ways that the friends, or what they did, they were trying lots of different things because they were affected by the heat wave. It made them super hot. hot. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That but was hot. I, I know that they, they went to the swimming pool and jumped in. That's what I like to do when I'm too hot. Oh, that's mm -hmm. a great detail because I love doing that also. So I love that you wrote that, Rita. Rita says, first, they go to the community pool and jump in. That's a great detail. That's one way yep. that they um, and, were trying to keep cool. And then next, they pretend that they're floating on ice cubes and sledding down on some ice cream. Oh, that's right. That was a great detail from the story. They have really good imagination. Mm -hmm. And I liked how you said next. They pretended they were floating on ice cubes and sledding down on ice cream. Okay. Let's see. Do you have I wish another? We could slide down on ice cream. That sounds that delicious. Would be fun, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Now, do you guys have another detail for me? Um. Well, I, I wrote a concluding sentence. Oh. Oh, I think okay. I have it. I'm sorry. Um, well, their mother reminds them to drink lots of water in the heat. That will help keep them cool. That's right. So that's another way that they were trying or they were affected by the heat wave, right? Because it was so hot. You're right. Their, mo their mother did remind them to drink lots of water water. Just like if you are outside when it's super hot, make sure you are drinking lots of water in the heat. And Tina already wrote a closing sentence. I want you guys to write it and see if you guys can write a closing sentence to my paragraph. Now, I have another friend who has another book to share and let's see if you have read this book. Good morning, good morning boys and girls. Hello Super Reader. This is Ricky. Ricky, boy, do I have a book I want to share with you guys. Do you guys love sharks as much as I do? Oh, boy, do I love them. And this is a great book to read if you love sharks like me. In this book, there are tons of great facts you can learn all about sharks. Like, did you know that there are 500 different species of sharks? Yeah. 500! That's amazing, isn't it? And, and did you did you know that sharks swim by beating their tails from side to side? Just like this. That's just like that. And the side fin helps them to steer. Isn't that amazing? 
If you want to read more about sharks, check out this book at your library or on Sora. Thanks for watching Raleigh PBS. I hope to see you later. Bye bye. Guy. I have a shark for that guy. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's, Who's there? there? I see. I see. I see who? who? I see you. Oh, <laughs> no. You see, because I see myself, because that was me. My I, uh -huh. <laughs> I got that. I got that. Hey, you uh, know what, Super Readers, thanks for hanging with us this week. Yep. We can look forward to seeing you next week, kind of the same time, same place, here at Valley PBS. That's right. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God. Bye-bye. Oh, my Bye. God. Ricky, you are too much.